On the first day, she said she wanted to see friends. Day two, she would spend gazing at nature. The third day, she would spend in her home city of New York, watching the busy city and the work day of the present. She concluded it with these words. I who am blind can give one hint to those who see. Use your eyes as if tomorrow you were stricken blind. In the first century Palestine, blindness meant that you would be subject to poverty and reduced to begging for a living. You lived at the mercy and generosity of others. And unless your particular kind of blindness was self-correcting, there was no hope whatsoever for a cure. It's no surprise then that one of the signs of the coming of the Messiah was that the blind would receive their sight. When Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has sent me to recover sight to the blind. He was indeed announcing he was the long-awaited Messiah. The story this morning of the healing of blind Bartimaeus would suggest to us that there are perhaps multiple types of blindness. Physical blindness, spiritual blindness, and blindness of the heart. The first kind of blindness is physical blindness. And in our Mark text, we read of the beggar, Bartimaeus, sitting by the road leading to Jericho. All the while, all that we know about him is that he is blind. We know of him only because of the impact that Jesus had upon his life. And we're about to see that his cry for mercy and his faith in Jesus will change his life forever. He was blind Bartimaeus. Now, I cannot begin to understand physical blindness. The closest I can describe to you is the pitch black darkness of camping in the woods of upstate New York. As a family, we camped almost every weekend. And each of us was given our own flashlight with fresh batteries, and we were expected to hold on to it. I can remember turning off the light, not seeing anything, including my hand that would be right in front of my face. I would wait for my eyes to adjust, but they didn't in that darkness. That's the only way I can imagine what it's like to be blind. When Jesus came down the road, Bartimaeus heard the commotion. He began to seek answers from those around him. And scripture tells us that he shouted. Now there are two different Hebrew words used in this text. In verse 38, it's the ordinary word for a loud shout meant to attract attention. But in verse 39, it is the shout of uncontrollable emotion. In other words, a scream. The Hebrew equivalent to an animal screeching. The word shows the utter desperation of this man. That day, even in his blindness, he saw with his faith more clearly than those around him in the crowd did. They tried to silence him, but they could not. Jesus was walking and teaching, and then he stopped and he said, Call him here. Now, Bartimaeus knew that this was the moment. This was the miracle moment where, when he could be released from the prison of darkness. Perhaps the most significant lesson for us as Christians is that Jesus stopped what he was doing to provide mercy as he healed the sick and welcomed the stranger. According to the Bible, providing mercy to one another matters. It matters because we all need mercy forgiveness, grace, and love. We all matter to God. Our needs matter to God. Day after day, the world passed by Bartimaeus, not seeing or caring about him. 
He heard the sound of camels. He heard the shouts of children, the gossip of the women, the business talk of the men, but he saw nothing. He was included in nothing. He simply sat there, day after day, until one day he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Fanny Crosby is a great gospel hymn writer. The name may be familiar to you. She lost her sight as a child, but in many ways, she could see so much more than others. Many feel that it was this story of Bar blind Bartimaeus that inspired her to write the hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Here are some of the words from that hymn. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Do you see the connection to this story from this hymn? In our story, Blind Bartimaeus, the request was for mercy. And what was Jesus' response? Your faith has made you well. Literally, it means your faith has saved you. His physical eyes and his spiritual eyes were open at the same time. The outward healing and his desires of faith reflected the inner wholeness that he also received in the way of salvation. And we know this because at the tail end of the story, it tells us, from that time on, he followed Jesus. Okay. So what is it that we say when we comprehend something? We have a phrase. We say, oh, I see. Right? And it's a phrase we use to speak of sight as insight or understanding. The place within us where we process and understand is the same place where our faith resides. It was this type of sight that Bartimaeus used to encounter Jesus Christ. Spiritual insight, faith, and desperation through surrender encouraged him to cry out for mercy and cause Jesus to take notice, to stop, and to provide the mercy that was requested. When we neglect the needs of those around us and fail to provide mercy, we show that we are spiritually blind. Another type of blindness we see in the story comes from the disciples. The disciples suffered from a kind of heart blindness. At this point, they were still blind to the nature and person of Jesus. They loved him passionately, but they still did not understand him as Messiah, as God. They were blind to the future. They could not see the meaning of the events that were happening around them and the significance of the ministry that they were part of. Now, we can't fault them for that. They didn't know the future, just like we don't know the future. But they experienced a sort of heart blindness. They saw with their eyes the, the uh, miracles of Jesus, but they did not see the significance of Jesus as the one who would die to save the world and forever change the course of humanity through love and forgiveness. Here in this story, we see determination and perseverance of the blind man and the reaction of God, the reaction that God takes when someone cries out for mercy. Jesus, walking to, through Jer Jericho, is interrupted by the opportunity to reveal God's glory through this act of mercy on behalf of Bartimaeus. And as I said in the beginning of this, to fulfill the words of scripture that the Messiah had come and the blind would see. Bartimaeus lacked physical, healthy physical eyes. The disciples lacked healthy spiritual eyes. What's our excuse? We have both, and yet there are times we fail to see. We fail to see our place as a beloved child of God. 
We fail to see the needs of those around us calling out for mercy. We sing, open my eyes that I may see. But if we see, do we promise to respond with mercy? A pastor told this story. He said, in my church, in my church's secretary's office, there hangs a modern picture composed of a maze of color and shape. I realized these sophisticated, modern, and abstract pictures were supposed to contain some profound artistic message, but I was never able to figure it out. It just looked like a jumbled mass of confusion and color. If there was a message there, I was blind to it. But then one day, while I was standing in the office waiting for the copier to warm up, one of the congregation's kindergarten Children came by, his name was Adam. He stood behind me and he said, do you see what I see? Do you see something in that picture? I said, because I sure don't. Adam looked at me with a big smile and very bright eyes and said, Pastor, can't you see him? It's Jesus hanging on the cross. I stared as hard as I could until my eyes actually hurt from staring. I wanted to believe Adam and that there was actually an image of Jesus hanging on the cross, hidden somewhere in that mass of color and shape. But I couldn't see Jesus anywhere. Adam, I'm sorry, but I must be blunt. You will have to help me see. Directing his finger to a mass of color in the center of the picture, Adam said, there. Right there, Pastor, do you see what I see? There is Jesus. His face, his arms outstretched on the cross. And then, like an epiphany, the image began to appear. Yes, there hidden somehow behind the colors and the shapes was barely a visible image of Jesus hanging with arms outstretched on the cross. It's amazing, Adam. Yes, I can see what you see. The job of a disciple of Jesus Christ is to help the blind to see. We can't always see life clearly as we are living it. Hindsight and reflection on events help us to see. We don't see the blessings and grace we receive daily. We don't see the importance of the giving of our time to one another as we rush around in our busyness. But we don't often see the needs of others. Are we too busy to stop and to care about the one who is crying out for mercy? What does Micah 6, 8 tell us? It tells us we are to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Does that describe our human response today? <clears throat> I was reading a book called Mindscape by Timothy Whitner when I was on my vacation not long ago. He uses an illustration, a visual mind picture, that helped me to understand why it's impossible for me to see the entirety of life and why it's so easy for God. It's the season of fall, right? And many of you have already visited a corn maze. We have them right here on Route 94, right? You know that perch that every corn maze has? You know what that's there for? It's somebody's job to be up there on that perch to make sure that there isn't someone panicking because they can't find their way out. And the author of this book said to think of God as being on the perch. God can see the beginning of the maze and the end of the maze. God can see the middle twists and turns. Now think of us as we're born as entering into the maze. Our eyes can only see what is before us, just a little ways, and what is behind us, just a little ways. It is our faith in God, our faith in the one who can see it all, that enables us to respond with our
our lives. The worst blindness of all would be living a life blind to the gift of salvation offered to us by Jesus Christ. Jesus came to make us whole and to perfect his good work within us. Following him is the way to extend mercy and love and to ensure that the light of Christ shines in and through us. Jesus expects from us love and faithfulness. He expects us to share his light to expel the darkness in a world of sin. What good is it to have a flashlight with fresh batteries if you don't turn it on? By God's grace, there is still hope for those of us who are blind. For Jesus came to heal the blind. It happened to Bartimaeus as his physical eyes were healed. It happened for the disciples as their spiritual eyes were opened. And it can happen for us as our hearts can be transformed by the love of God through Jesus, the light of the world. How do we go about it? All that is necessary is that we cry out to God for mercy, just as Bartimaeus did centuries ago. Jesus stands at the door of our heart, extending the gift of salvation and the gift of mercy to you this day. Let us respond to God and ask, 